I think just on this, it seems like nowadays there's this, um, you know, the more weight a topic has, it seems nowadays pastors will speak more softly and more compassionately or whatever. And I think that's just the exact opposite. Like if you look at the Protestant tradition, if you look at abolitionists in the past even, the more weight a subject has, the more harsh they were with it. Mm -hmm. Like Luther, you can't read Luther without thinking, I've never seen anyone speak like this. Ever. Yeah. You know, a madman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he was a madman, yeah. Well, look uh, at all the people God yeah. used to have. I mean, you yeah. almost, you almost so did like, a garrison quote about being a madman, lunatic, and all that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so yeah. I, I think that, you know, when, when you have a sleeping church, like, I, some, sometimes it's really hard for me to get up in the morning, so I have to use this obnoxious alarm that's just like, bah, 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 right. you know, like that. Um, when you have a sleeping church, you have to be loud. You have to be speaking with passion. It has to have the same weight as the subject that you're talking about. And if it doesn't have that weight, the message isn't actually heard because the message is a weighty one. You're talking about tone Mm -hmm. is what you're talking about. We, we talk about this all the time. I talk about this when I'm training young preachers is that the tone of your message needs to reflect the tone of the text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're preaching from lamentation, Mm -hmm. what should the tone of your message be? Yeah. Is it excitement? Is it celebration? Is it joy? Mm-hmm. Or is it, or is it <laughs> lament? Or is it the tone of lament? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the tone of your message should reflect the tone of the text. That's 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 the essence of expository preaching. That not only do your points draw from the text, but that your preaching reflects the tone of the text. Mm-hmm. And I would say the same is true in the message that we that we that we share in this world as a whole. I mean, when we're talking about when we're talking about abolition and we're talking about abortion being murder the tone of that message ought to reflect the tone yeah. of of the issue. Well, so I, I'll just tell you this because I've always tried to be conciliatory towards yeah. this, but people who attack the tone or the tactics and stuff, I, I'm trying in my older age to sort of like listen to them because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to be putting people off from the message because of your tone and your tactics. But they're just confessing why, I mean, for the past 10 years, I've always found it very strange that when it comes to the topic of like crushing a little innocent image bearer mm-hmm. into bits and pieces yep. um, till they're just a bloody pulp right. that's washed down a drain yep. or discarded. When it comes to that topic, I have been told that I'm too radical. Too, yeah. And I'm always thinking to myself, what has become of the church of Jesus Christ in America where you are asked to be calm about the slaughter of children? Yeah. Mm. So let me say a couple of things. First of all, let, let, let's just ask anybody what their tone would be if they walked outside of a preschool today. And we've all heard this argument mm-hmm. and we lined up preschoolers and somebody's coming by and they're hitting each one in the head with a hammer or whatever it may be. You know, what? I ask a pastor, what's your tone going to be when you drive by and see that? Are you going to stop and get out and say, well, hang on, brother. Hang on a minute, man. Let me, yeah. let's, let's just talk about this. Mm-hmm. Are you going to assume the guy with the hammer is a victim? Yeah, right. No, you're going to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, you're going to jump out of your vehicle. You're going to slam on your brakes. You're going to jump out. And if stop him. You, yeah, you're going to do everything that you can to stop. The tone is going to be one of urgency. Yeah. And, and I would say that's exactly what's happening across our land today. You know, right here in the state of Oklahoma, was it like twenty babies a day that are that are murdered in the state of Oklahoma, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, five thousand a year? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, my question is: Is Pastor, what's your tone right now? What's your tone in your pulpit? What's your tone outside of the pulpit? Yeah. What's your tone when you talk mm-hmm. about this with your people? Are you talking about this with your people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your tone? Because it's no different. Yeah, and this is something even like I, I, that changed with me when it, just from pro life apologetics to uh, yeah. talking to people about abolition. Because on the street, you would sort of t- treat it as a debate, like there's a legitimacy to it, like someone saying coming up and saying, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I think it's okay to have an abortion," and not treating even that with the weight that it deserves. And the thing that shifted with me even there was just that I, now I'll just tell people, well. I'll be patient and calm and things like that, but I'll say, you know, you are a bigot towards your preborn neighbor. You're an ageist. Mm-hmm. Like you think it's okay for somebody to murder their preborn child, and that is an, a truly wicked thing. Like you need to repent and put your faith in Christ and go to the gospel on that. But then my the words that I'm using to describe it are reflecting that weight. But before with pro life apologetics, I'm kind of like, okay, well, why do you think that? Like, why don't you think they're a person? You know, really treating it like it's something that we can just agree to disagree on. But it's not. It's not just a this debate that we can just have as, as an intellectual exercise. This is something that someone is talking about the murder of their preborn neighbor, and 
that needs to be addressed as if it is what it is. Yeah. Not as though it's something lesser, like we're mm-hmm. debating what kind of ice cream is better than the other. Um, mm-hmm. that's, not, mm-hmm. that's not treating the debate correct. 